Now that we have consumer and producer surplus, we can turn to the big question of interest. How do we measure the total well-being or total welfare of society? Economists typically answer this in a very simple way. Total social welfare is the sum of consumer and producer surplus. I'm not saying this is always right. In practice, you may care more about consumers or producers in certain situations, but it's a convenient starting point. And from this starting point, we can get to the most important conclusion in the welfare economic sections of this course. The competitive equilibrium, where supply equals demand, will be the point that maximizes total welfare. Producing either more or less than this amount lowers the total size of the welfare pie. Graphically, we can see this by returning to our gas market example. Suppose the market is in equilibrium at point A, where price is $3 a gallon and quantity produces 14 billion gallons a month. Consumer surplus is the area of the triangle here. Producer surplus is the area of the triangle here. And total social welfare is the sum of these two triangles, or this entire area here. This total social welfare is at a maximum when the price is set at its equilibrium value of $3. We can show this by trying to change the price and watching what happens to total welfare. Suppose that the government mandates that gas companies reduce the price of gas to $2 a gallon. If the government lowers the price gas companies are getting, the gas companies are not going to be willing to produce as much gas. In our example, the gas companies are only willing to produce 10 billion gallons a month at this price, so the quantity falls to 10 billion. So what happens to welfare? Consumer surplus is still the area between the price line and the demand curve, but only for the people who are actually getting to buy the smaller numbers of gallons of gas. Consumer surplus is this area here. Producer surplus is the area between the price line and supply curve, which is now just this little triangle here. Total social welfare is again the sum of these two areas. It's clear that total welfare is smaller than it was before the price change. Before the price change, total welfare was this entire triangle. After the price change, we lost this smaller triangle here. The government price mandate reduced total welfare by the amount of that smaller triangle. Two different things are going on here. First, there was a transfer from producers to consumers. Producers used to have this rectangle as part of their surplus. After the price change, this rectangle has become part of the consumer surplus. This transfer happens because the government mandated a lower price. Producers get less for their gas, lowering their surplus, and consumers don't have to pay as much, increasing their surplus. Under our definition of total social welfare, this is neither good nor bad. Of course, in reality, you may feel differently if you own stock in ExxonMobil. We'll talk about this more in the next lecture. Second, there was a loss of some surplus that we call deadweight loss. This triangle used to be a part of the consumer's and producer's surplus. After the government mandated the price drop, this part of the surplus is gone. The deadweight loss is the reduction in welfare that results from trades that are not made. The key point is that any time there are trades that would make both parties better off, but that don't get made, there's a reduction in welfare. In economic terms, we say that any limitations on such trades are inefficient. Maximum efficiency, and therefore maximum welfare, is achieved when all mutually beneficial trades get made. So take the sale of the 12 billionth gallon of gas when the price of gas was $3. This sale generated consumer surplus. Consumers were willing to pay $4, but only had to pay $3, so they got a surplus of $1. And it generated producer surplus too. Producers were willing to sell for only $2.50, but they could sell for $3, so they got a surplus of 50 cents. If we take that trade away, which is what happened when the government mandates a price of $2, both sides are worse off, and society as a whole is worse off. Indeed, any trade to the left of the 14 billion gallon mark would make society better off because for all those trades, consumers' willingness to pay is above the firm's marginal cost. That is, the value the consumer places on that gallon of gas exceeds the cost of the firms producing that gallon of gas. But with a lower price, some of these trades don't get made. And this is the total waste from society's perspective. Goods that are valued at above what they cost to make are not getting sold. The bottom line is that competitive equilibrium where supply equals demand, is the point that makes society as a whole the best off. Any attempt to deviate from this equilibrium 
will lower total welfare. 